Wayne told me that he used to have a disconnect between what he saw in the mirror and what he knew to be true from his scale and his clothes. This disconnect is referred to in my Facebook group as Fat Brain. Do you feel it too? Your scales clearly show you've lost a lot of weight and you have changed clothing sizes, but when you look in the mirror, you still see your previous heavier self. Well, Wayne has worked through this disconnect, and today we're going to as well. Don't go anywhere. Get ready for the holidays and new year. ProCare has a new multivitamin soft chew that comes with three delicious fruit flavors. With flexible dosing, you can accommodate your whole family's vitamin needs, and it even includes iron. Paired with calcium chews and our new protein powder. Visit ProCareNow.com and use code SUSAN10 to save 10%. Hi, I'm registered dietitian, nutritionist, Dr. Susan Mitchell, ex-radio dietitian turned podcaster. You're listening to the Bariatric Surgery Success Podcast, episode number 124. Today, let's cut through all the health hype. Let's get to the accurate nutrition information you want, simple strategies that work in your daily life. I want you to feel well every day. Get out there. Do the things on your bucket list. That's why I do the podcast for you. You're in the right place. I'm really glad you're listening. Are you receiving the weekly newsletter, Breaking Down Nutrition? You'll be the first to know about product specials, helpful tips, the latest podcasts, and upcoming interviews that you don't want to miss, like today with Dr. Connie. Sign up on my website, breakingdownnutrition.com. Joining me in the studio is Atlanta-based psychologist, Dr. Connie Stapleton. Well, if you're a regular listener, you already know that Dr. Connie brings her A-game every visit. She shares her vast experience in the mental health aspect of bariatrics. She doesn't hold back either, gets right to the (laughs) core of the issues, and always shares practical ways for you to improve your relationships with food and other people, but most importantly, with yourself. Today, she's doing that with what my Facebook group refers to as fat brain, the disconnect between what you see in the mirror and what you really weigh and look like now. You can find links to Dr. Connie's website, as well as her podcast called Barry Aftercare in the show notes. Hey, Dr. Connie. Good morning, Dr. Susan. I'm so happy to talk with you again. Well, how are things in Dr. Connie's world? You know, I think you have some exciting news to share. Don't you have a new book and a new journal to tell us about? I do. I do. They're brand new on Amazon. Mind Prep is a book that uh, I have a series of videos called Mind Prep, and I thought I need to put these in book form. So it's Mind Prep book, How to Prepare for Bariatric Surgery and Live as a Healthy Post-Op. And it's one of my favorite books that I've written. So it's it's a great regardless great book, regardless of where you are in your journey. And is, that, is it out now or getting ready to come it out? It is. No, it's on Amazon now. And does the journal go with this or is that something separate? Actually, they're completely separate. However, if you are a post-op, you want to have this very aftercare daily progress journal because it specifically targets how you're doing on your journey, helps you set food goals, helps you set exercise goals. In addition, what I love most about it is it asks you questions about what you did well today because so many people beat up on themselves all the time. Oh my gosh, yes. That negative Mm -hmm. (laughs) self-talk. Well, I love this. I'm going to put the links to the new book and the journal in the show notes so that they are easy to find that way as well. Well, I can't wait to take a look at them. Thanks. Uh, Okay. So, Dr. Connie, have you heard of something that my Facebook book, Facebook group, I got your book on the mind, on my mind now. On my Facebook, in my Facebook group is calling Fat Brain. They describe this as a, a disconnect between what they see in the mirror and what the scales say. And they're saying, hey, I've lost a lot of weight. I'm wearing smaller clothing sizes, but my brain continues to see a much larger version of myself in the mirror. What, what is this? So, yeah, 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 I've heard of it. Definitely. And I too have heard of it called Fat Brain. And some people, Patients and professionals alike sometimes use the term body dysmorphia to describe this phenomenon. But either way, fat brain, 
body dysmorphia, they're not actually what we're describing here. What we're describing here is body image distortion. And the definition is just what you're saying. When people look in the mirror and they see either a smaller or larger version of themselves than is reality. So it's body image distortion. So that's so when I hear you say the term, in my mind, I'm thinking this doesn't just have to be in the case of bariatric surgery. Right. This could be a lot of things, really, whether you've uh, had surgery, just lost a lot of weight. But also I'm thinking about people who have um, lost an arm or a leg, for example, but yet they still feel like that limb is there. Is that anything similar? That's brilliant, actually. It's very much like that. And some specialists really use the term phantom fat to refer to this phenomenon. I have heard that term, yeah. Yeah, because it's feeling fat and unacceptable, especially after losing a lot of weight. In fact, there's a researcher named Joshua Roboski, and he's a psychologist at Rhode Island Hospital. He studies body images and or body image, and he talks to people who are doing bariatric surgery. And here's what he wrote about this in 2004. He said, we're kind of playing on the concept of phantom limb. So you're right on, Susan, in which people who've lost an arm or a leg feel like the limb is there or even causes them pain. So, you know, another psychologist who specializes in body image issues named Elaine Daniels says, people who were formerly overweight often still carry that internal image, that perception with them. They literally feel as if they're still in a larger body. Interesting. Well, stay right where you are. In 15 seconds, we'll talk about reasons for these body image disturbances. Do you want to give gifts packed with purpose this holiday season? Check out newhopegirls.com for beautiful bags that rescue girls and empower women. Use code TRANSFORM15 to save 15%. So, Dr. Connie, What are the reasons for body image disturbances like this disconnect or fat brain feeling? Don't you wish it was just boiled down to a reason? Yeah, (laughs) it never never is. (laughs) It's always more complicated, right? Just like food. (laughs) For sure. And it makes it difficult for us because we can't give people an answer. I know. There could be several reasons for this. And a lot of people say that the brain hasn't caught up with how quickly the body changes after you have weight loss surgery. Um, So the distortion can be even more significant when you've carried weight for a lot of years and all of a sudden it's like, whoa, who is this? So the brain can't catch up. But another reason is related to fear of weight regain, which is so common as you and I both know. And Dr. Hraboski says this might be especially true for people who have been weight lost yo-yoers. And again, you and I have both worked with yo-yo dieters. They're familiar with that regain. And so psychologically, it's hard for them to see and accept the smaller size for fear they're going to go back up to that bigger size. Right. So if you never change, you don't, you know, you just still see yourself as you've always been, then you never have to deal with it. If you do gain the weight back, oh, but then you don't get all the beautiful hard work that you've done and the benefits of that. Yeah, that's, yeah, exactly. And so we need to, like in the journal, say, this is what I've done well. This is what I feel good about. This is what I love about how my life and my body are changing. And I can think that body image what you see could even be harder to change in your mind than the actual physical body or weight loss itself. Yes. So true. So true. And I've heard stories and I'm sure you have, you know, that people go into the, the dressing room and they still carry with them sizes that are way too large. Does it have anything to do with, um, you know, the idea, it's never enough, either I've Mm. never lost enough weight, or I'm going to reach out and say, I'm not good enough, you know, I'm just not good enough to actually be smaller or enjoy this weight loss. Or is any of that related? Absolutely. You know, it's, it's a sad, sad thing that most of us, regardless of weight, do talk to ourselves quite negatively. And we talked about that at the beginning, that negative 
negative self-talk. It's we have these unrealistic expectations and feel like we need to be perfect. And our society clearly is so body obsessed. You know, both men and women have these highly unrealistic expectations of what weight loss can do for them. You know, they think I'm going to get to this ideal body weight, or I'm going to reach this goal weight and I'm going to look like the swimsuit model, right? I'm not going to have any figure problems, any skin, any issues. And then they're so disappointed when they see the reality of what their body looks like after surgery. So this perfectionism, you get, you get stuck in thinking I'm fat or I'm going to be perfect. And that's not reality for any of us. If there was one thing I wish that we could change, it is that statement that if you're not perfect, you're fat. I just, oh man, talk about getting me riled up. <laughs> it's, you know, it's just the most ridiculous thing ever that we allow these influencers and these unrealistic models to set a standard when I'll bet if I went in and you went and had a, um, check of what they eat and how they eat and the ways they think about themselves and visualize themselves, well, we just might not find perfection after all. You as a, uh, you know, a PhD uh, dietitian, you'd probably be like, oh my gosh, people, how, are, how are you surviving? So that's why I'm like, really, don't look to that. Look to taking care of yourself and, and all the beauty that comes from who you are, not, not comparing yourself. Oh, that just, <laughs> that really bugs me. So let's get to the meat of what is always about what you bring to the table. What you going to do about it? <laughs> so if you're having these thoughts and you're struggling and you're looking in the mirror and thinking, you know, gosh. It doesn't match what I know I've done. How are we going to deal with this? There's some really great techniques you can try on your own. And you can do these with a therapist or a coach or your best friend or yourself, right? Just look at some before and after pictures. A lot of times people will see photographs much more realistically than they will when they're looking at themselves in the mirror. And you can see a lot of the changes or compare some of the old clothes that you used to wear compared to what you're wearing now. Go to a store where you're familiar with the sizes. You know, sizing is always kind of tricky because you can wear, I can wear, you know, all different sizes. But Correct. Depending at, on who the maker is. So it, yeah. it's not like a, yeah, standard. Yeah, exactly. But try and look at your old clothes and look at your new clothes. It's a great, great way to say, oh, clearly. I've made some changes. Then you got to work at retraining your brain and understand that, okay, this is, this tells the truth here. I don't wear these clothes. I wear these clothes. And so really let me butt in right there because something you said I really like, retrain your brain. So what I'm hearing you say is that even though we've thought this way for a long time, maybe we've been yo-yo dieters up and down, lost weight and, and see ourselves not as we really are. The brain can be retrained to think differently. That's what you're saying. Absolutely. And say words like, I am a healthier version of myself. Get rid of fat, thin, whatever. And say, I am a healthier version of myself in every aspect of my life. Use positive language, and it doesn't have to be size related. Absolutely. I totally agree with that. It does not have to be size related. Just that positive self talk that starts to see yourself in a positive and pleasant, uplifting way, right? right. And, and I know you have a great story about <laughs> your, your grandson that you told me that I just thought was so cute, but it's so positive. It's so, so sweet. So he's 10 now, but when he was like four, my daughter was in a dressing room and they, they were trying on kids clothes or whatever. And she's taking a video of him and he looks in the mirror, looks at himself right in the eyes and says, hello, handsome. <laughs> <laughs> it was adorable, but we can all look to ourselves and say, looking good today. Absolutely. And it doesn't have to be handsome, pretty, beautiful, sure. healthy, looking sharp, looking smart, yeah. feeling strong, you know, oh. good, positive words, right? Love that feeling strong. 
Feeling strong, feeling healthy. This is so valuable. And when you start this brain retrain, <laughs> Dr. Connie, <laughs> is this um, something? Okay, so I'm just thinking because this does stretch out to negative self talk too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Is this something that you, how do you make it routine? Do you put it in your mind just the same way yes. that you say breakfast and protein are important? Okay, when I get up in the morning, I'm going to look in the mirror and say this. How do you start and work on something like this? Well, first of all, becoming aware of when you're speaking negatively to yourself. This takes a tremendous amount of effort. So having people around you to help you, the people who know you the best, to point out when you're saying something negative about yourself or words that you say, you know, if you hear me use this word, will you point it out to me and then replace it immediately with something more positive? It's an effort, but it's so worth it. And it does become natural. And it isn't, you know, what is the word, stuck up or thinking of yourself as grandiose. And that's not what we're talking about here. We're not, you know, trying to give you big heads. What we want you to do is see yourself for the value and the worth that you are. That's exactly it. And if those are your words, I love that. I have worth. I have value. Those are beautiful words to say to yourself. Okay. So as we wrap up, you always have something to tell us that we need to know that I didn't ask you. So (laughs) what, what is your bottom line today that you want us to know about? Bottom line is focus just on what Susan said. Dr. Susan said it perfectly. I am strong. Today, I am strong and working toward my best self, meaning every area of your life, you're strong in the decisions you make, you're strong in the choices you make for food, you're strong in the exercise you do. Today, I am strong. And I want to say too, that it's okay to have days when you're not, because I know Mm -hmm. I'll see this in the Facebook group a lot when people say, you know, I'm just feeling weak today, or I'm feeling down today, or I'm just not seeing myself as positive. I'm afraid I'm going to fail. And I just want to say right now that I've had those days. I know you do, Dr. Connie. All of us have days when we just think, wow, this is just not going so well today. And that's okay. Doesn't mean you're a failure. Doesn't mean you're not going to succeed. It just means you had a bad day. And on those days you say, today I am strong. And that means I'm going to put myself in bed and wake up tomorrow even stronger. (laughs) Uh, As always, thank you, Dr. Connie. We appreciate your time, your willingness to always take a deep dive into these hard topics. Your information is so helpful. Thank you. Well, I appreciate what you're doing for the community. So important. Okay, bottom line, look in that mirror at your healthy, awesome, adorable self, and remember how far you have come and keep on going. You are worth it. Bariatric Surgery Success with Dietitian Dr. Susan Mitchell is produced and owned by Practicalories, LLC. All rights reserved. Remember, the content provided on this podcast is for information purposes only and doesn't create a patient-provider relationship. It's intended to provide reference material and is not designed to provide medical advice. Please consult your health care provider regarding any medical issues you have relating to symptoms, conditions, diseases, diagnosis, treatments, and side effects. Podcast guests express their own opinions, experience, and conclusions, which do not necessarily reflect or agree with the host, Dr. Susan Mitchell, or Practicalories, LLC.